Hello, today's March 27th, and we're doing more news today. More news. More news. I don't know what you're sitting there thinking. You're thinking, I cannot get through a week without Tesla news. Yes. Give me Tesla news. And as most of you know, I'm a man of the people. <laughs> <laughs> this dash cam video, which you should all go watch, it's amazing, shows Tesla steering toward the lane divider again. So this Tesla dash cam shows the... Uh, the Tesla vehicle really it's a it's a left exit I guess so there's like a, yeah. a lane split and it's like let's go right for the divider and this may sound familiar because we reported on a Tesla that was like head-on no brakes into the divider and a guy died and it accelerates somehow it interprets that left hand exit as an open lane that it can merge into uh... and it does this guy had complained about it before and supposedly they fixed it in a software update. But then there was another software update and he it did it again. So then he recorded a dash cam of it. And it certainly looks like that's what's happening. This might be involved in the death of some people. Not good news. There's a picture of that first well, crash and it's pretty brutal. It definitely vindicates that other guy. Because remember, Tesla was kind of like, oh, we think this was probably his fault. Well, it's... It, you know, it seems like Tesla Autopilot is kind of in this, uh, you know, Schrodinger's cat position where it's like, oh, it's autonomous. It's just the regulation authorities won't let it be autonomous. And then it's like, it's a driver assist and you should not yeah. take your eyes off the wheel. And But they do have a lot of fine print that says, no, seriously, yeah, pay attention. And I guess that absolves them. You have to, you have to give them credit in terms of, in the brass tacks, they tell you, hey, listen, don't rely on this. Yeah. But on the other side, like you're saying, they advertise autopilot. Yeah. Mm. Well, that autopilot, you know, you can say what you want about it, but a lot of people think that it's really cool. And you know who really thinks it's cool? The Chinese. <laughs> Tesla has sued a former employee for allegedly stealing data and the autopilot source code over 300,000 files. This is a guy that quit working for Tesla and went to work for a Chinese self-driving startup. He opened those 300 some odd thousand files like a week before he was gone. So that's a lot of reading in a week, isn't it? Definitely a little suspicious. <laughs> really Just burning the midnight oil there at the Tesla. <laughs> this is, uh, we've seen this so many times before. Yeah. They go and they, like the Boeing, was it Boeing where they stole the, the jet foil? Oh yeah. Plans. The jet foil plane. Yeah. And then there was another one too. I think it was one of the modem companies. And uh, yeah, this is a story that plays out over and over. And I think Tesla is probably correct on this one. It's going to be another story that we're going to follow as it develops. The other thing that Tesla is urging its employees to do, or, you know, in the case of stealing and going to China, not do that. But what they do want you to do is deliver some cards. Elon Musk's email has urged Tesla employees to help with deliveries. The first quarter push to boost vehicle deliveries. The Tesla CEO, Elon Musk, asked all employees to shift their focus to delivering cars to customers, no matter their role. The reason for this is because they've gotten over production hell. Production is actually going well now. There's a lot of people that order Teslas that need to take delivery of their vehicles. And so they have a little bit of a problem because there's not enough people to deliver the cars. And there's no dealerships. This is not yeah. going to be a problem in the future. It's just that they've they collected orders for so long that they need to get this initial glut of but, orders out of their system. But they're taking Model Y orders now. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what makes you think this isn't going to be a problem in the future? Oh, I guess it will be a problem for <laughs> Model Y. I'm oh, talking about Model 3. What about those trucks? Oh, yeah. It'll probably oh, be a problem right. for those, oh, those yeah. all right. every new model. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I wonder, though, if you're a Tesla employee and you deliver a car, how do you get back home? Mm. You just have to walk it. I <laughs> they want everyone, you know, they expect you to be dedicated to the company. If you have to walk back home, that's what you have to do. That's uh, Maybe you have to do it in Paris, I guess. Mm. Well, Apple had a big week. And uh, although the announcements technically start tomorrow, or uh, I mean... Uh, Monday. It's already happened. Yes. Uh, we don't know what they are. <laughs> we do know what they are. Uh, one of them is the new Apple News thing that's kind of like Google News. But some people are warning against it. The New York Times CEO has warned publishers ahead of the Apple News launch. Uh, the, what's the exact quote from him? It's like, we think it's a little weird when journalism comes from a middleman source. We don't think that's yeah. a good idea. He said he's not comfortable yeah. when his voice 
is coming from someone else and mixed in with everybody else's. So he's saying the New York Times, you know, it's the paper of record. And to have his headline up against the sun, you know, on the same topic, <laughs> he's saying that that gives the wrong impression. It's almost like he has a financial, you know, well, there is know that. stake in this game. There's that, but I could also see not wanting to be associated with the sun. How does he think yeah. SEO works? Like, does he think that whenever someone Googles a news article, it's always just going to display like, what? Now, this is the guy who uh, they replaced their former CEO, who was the print dinosaur. And this guy has grown their online sales exponentially. So he does have a plan in terms of that. And it seems to be working, but it is not going to include Apple yet. But he is on Google News, so that maybe takes away some of the sting of his argument. Yeah, it's, I don't understand. It sounds yeah. like it's more of a personal vendetta. And Apple, you know, who knows what they're going to want in terms of... 30%. Yeah. Their share. <laughs> or 20%. Is it 20%? Is that 30% return? of the subscriptions? I think it's 30% for the one-time fees, and it's like 15 or 20% for the subscriptions. Yeah, that's a big buy. It's pretty, yeah. These papers do not have a ton of margin. Not these days. Apple has also announced a refresh, or is it really a refresh? A little bit, it's yeah. It's kind of a... Uh... They're faster. It's got the neural engine. Yeah. Apple's quietly announced a 10.5-inch iPad Air and a refreshed iPad Mini. These are the same under the hood, same processor. It's the new low-power, you know, A-whatever chip. And it's also the neural engine that they've got in their other devices. It doesn't have Face ID. It still has the, uh, still has the button. But uh, Apple's AI thing, especially for like image recognition through raw video, is actually very impressive. And so now that is on these devices as well. So things like augmented reality maybe will work better with these devices. They claim it's a 70% improvement. And if you're running on one with an old chewed up battery, it might be a lot more than that. Yeah. So. Uh. Also, I think the uh, the old Apple pencils are compatible with these. So. Yeah, you can use the pencils. Four and five. Now, I, I, there's some problem with the second gen pencils. Yeah, so the second gen, they use like a magnetic strip to charge and to pair with your iPad, but I don't think that that will work with the old, that or seemed, the, I guess the new iPad still too. That seems really dumb. Hopefully, it is dumb, because the old pencil charging design, like you have to like hook it in through the back, and so you just have the pencil sticking out of the side of the iPad. It's very weird. Hopefully they'll announce, they will have announced something and people will be engaging us in the comments to be like, nope, you got it wrong. And it's like, ah, we didn't know because it wasn't out yet. But that would mean that our audience uses iPads. Oh, well, they definitely do. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Still like it. The Fight Apple's, me, IRL. Check out our iPad Pro review that Krista did a while back. Don't it's at awesome. me. <laughs> the Apple Store is constantly in the news because of what we were talking about, that 30%. People are not fans of the 30%. And that is a lot. That is ask. a lot. I mean, Americans, at least, we have an easy comparison to think about what 30% means. It's our income. That's what they take from us. Of course, people in the EU are going to be like, 30%, they take 50 of ours. <laughs> yeah, that's why we don't live there. And uh, <laughs> the, the app, Spotify, remember last week, Spotify, the big fight. Spotify was like, no, it's not right. And now You're wealthy. They don't take anything. Another player has entered the game against the App Store. <laughs> Kaspersky. Yes, yes, that, that Kaspersky. They filed an antitrust complaint against the Apple over their App Store policy. And it's not about the percentage, although that's one of the things I think they mentioned. This is about uh, locking down the device. So Kaspersky has an application for setting profiles where you can control what applications are shown to the user, what websites you can visit. This is about parental control. Well, Apple pulled Kaspersky's app for doing this when they released iOS 12, which includes some of the same features. Ooh. Mm, yeah. This is for kids. And another reason they might have done this is the Kaspersky app actually disables all browsers, even the embedded Safari browser. So you have to browse through Kaspersky's little built-in browser in the app, which logs everything and tells the parents, hey, this is what the kids are looking at. And Apple does not like the idea of anybody turning off Safari. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> Although it offers the same feature itself in the iOS 12 update. Safari should just be put down let's be honest <laughs> it's gotten a lot of bugs lately it's disappointing yeah. Yeah. it's gross remember 5ge 
Oh yeah, AT and T's bald faced lie. The you regulators. mean their fast new technology oh. yep. that's coming before anybody else? The first to market with five G, I think, is what you meant to say. Do we have nobody that's going to enforce any kind of like <laughs> federal? Well, here's the thing, and you're going to be eating your words. They've speed tested it now. Uh, open signal, according to them, AT and T's five G E falls short of T Mobile and Verizon four G speeds. Womp womp. Who could have guessed? What? I'm blown away right now. But it says right there, five. How can five be less than four? How is like, yeah, I mean, it's it's not, it's the same. It's literally like 5GE is literally 4G. But it's the 5G No, it's evolution. got a different, it's, it's a different character. You're wrong. This is literally like they should, the, the Federal Trade Commission or somebody, this is no work. This, the, uh, you know, you remember like the 1950s, like this is Dr. Phil's tonic water. At least Dr. Phil's tonic water that cures everything had cocaine in it. This is nothing. There's literally nothing Are here. you saying you'd rather have some cocaine with your 4G? <laughs> well, if you're going to pay for something, you uh. should get it, right? You know what? This is similar to uh, when they say that you get unlimited internet access for 19.99, and then there's a throttle and a data cap. <laughs> It is like that. And yeah. you're not allowed to do that. No. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Robocalls are a scourge upon us all. I, it infuriates me. Robocalls, for me, are up there with people not using turn signals. And what are you going to do about it? You're helpless, right? Well, for once in our miserable lives, maybe the telephone companies have our backs. USA Today has the article, the fight against robocalls continue as AT&T, Comcast, etc. compete for, you know, complete one test of a verified call. So the verified calls thing is going to be this thing that will make it harder for robocallers to spoof the caller ID to make it seem like it's a local number or that the source is not what it says it is or it's just some random cell phone that's very similar to your own cell phone number so it's probably a local person, right? They're going to they're gonna do away with, with all of that. We actually have a lot of robocall stories this this week. You're not supposed to be playing with the face. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice. They probably all heard that on the mic. It's going to be really loud. Here's the catch. Only those two companies right now. Now, the other companies have agreed they're going to come on board, but they're not yet. My favorite thing about that story is that it's also only landlines. Well, they're going to bring it to mobiles. <laughs> but here's the other big catch. Only the newest phones. Yeah. So right now... One of the Samsung phones and one of the LG phones are the only ones it works on. They were very careful to say that it's free for landline owners. They were very careful careful to avoid saying that it would be free for mobile well, users. That'll, that'll be an improvement for me, at least, because my work phone gets spam all the time. And I always pick it up because I'm like, oh, that could be a client. It's not a client. It's, yeah. So, it's never a client. Uh, Don't hang up. But as we go forward, you know, I'd say probably three to four years, maybe this will make a dent in the robocalls. In about five years. Maybe. And then we'll start getting robo-texts. Yeah. Oh. Well, the cable lobby are the ones who fight for a lot of these stupid rules. And you think to yourself, why can they advertise nineteen ninety nine and give me a data cap and a throttle and charge me the broadcast fee? What's a broadcast fee? Those things come from these giant lobby organizations like uh, America's Cable Association. But wait. America's Cable Association doesn't exist anymore. Cable Loggy is seeking to better its reputation by dropping cable from its name. The American Cable Association is now the American Communications Association. Totally different. Now, my favorite one was the NCTCA, which is the, we used to be the National Cable and Telecommunications Association, is now the National Communications and Telecommunications. <laughs> the National Redundancy Association? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing changes. It's not new management. It's not a different mission statement. They have the same clients. They're just changing their name because everybody hates the word cable. Turns out. Hmm. Wonder why that is. Bad news. Who can say? If you work at Oracle. Oracle has swung the layoff axe and has clear-cut entire teams of engineers. Oracle takes a page out of IBM's playbook this week with unannounced layoffs rationalized by restructuring to the cloud. The email from the executive guy was like amazing because it was like, we've got a, a lot of really amazing things. The company is going to be stronger than ever. It's like, we're, it's going to be great. And then four hours later, it's like, you're all fired. It's going to be stronger now that they're gone. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. And this wasn't 
cutting fat either. This was engineering teams working on current products and somebody decided, hey, we're totally focused on the cloud. We're not doing any of this anymore. You can all go. <laughs> there was one story about a manager and he said he got the email and it said, okay, bring your entire team needs to go to conference room B and you're going to lay them off. And he said it was just soul crushing to look into their eyes and watch that happen. And four hours later, he was back in his office and he got called to the conference room. <laughs> <laughs> Merciless. <laughs> So, yeah. I hope they stole a lot of office supplies on their way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's so much toilet paper and the, staples. The thing with Oracle Kitchen is... Kitchen supplies. I mean, a microwave. Everybody in the know, Oracle kind of stopped innovating a long time ago. They've got a lot of government customers and a lot of customers in the big sector. But, I mean, we had that story about Bezos abandoning Oracle. And Oracle is going to turn into a litigation machine because they've got a ton of patents and a ton of stuff. And they're really greedy with their IP. I mean, look at the whole... Uh, uh, Google and Oracle thing with the API. Like an API is literally built to be the application programming interface. It is the interface that you're supposed to interface with when you're building programs that party. do interfacing. And somehow their lawyers made that into like this big nefarious thing. And they're going to do that with all of their other intellectual property. And other countries are probably going to just stop using American stuff. Do you well, think that they just laid off their lawyer teams too? I bet they didn't. No, they kept the lawyers. No, no. Sure. The other thing is, uh, it's a bit of hubris to think that you're all of a sudden going to take on Amazon and Microsoft for the cloud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. Or, the, 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 uh, more importantly, the old dinosaur customers like the U.S. government. It's like, you, do you really think the U.S. government is going to move to Oracle Cloud? Because I've got news for you. Mm. That's not going to happen. Oh, I think you're giggling like it's just hilarious to even think about. <laughs> it really is. Well, the... Trump administration might pick them over Amazon just because he hates Bezos. I, you know, at the risk of, of segueing, I knew somebody that retired from the Pentagon and was Larry Ellison was like at, you know, the Pentagon selling government contracts in the 80s. And it, it, their stories about Larry Ellison were fascinating and hilarious, but he was just very doggedly like, no, you need to give me a contract or I'm just going to annoy the piss out of you until you give me a government contract. And it's worked well for him. Segway? Ramble? Non sequitur. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook's, uh, Facebook, Axios, and NBC paid this guy to whitewash Wikipedia pages. I love this stock photo. This it's article is amazing. Like, Ashley Feinberg or whoever the article is, like, so incensed that this thing exists. But I think this guy is actually doing it on the up and up. Like he's, uh, but it's it's a terrible thing. <laughs> it is a terrible. I mean, he knows what he's doing. Thing. He but just doesn't really care because he's getting paid. It is happening on a level that you guys would not even believe, and most of the time, it's not disclosed. At least this guy discloses it. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> this guy's a lawyer, and he brings the pedantic lawyerly ways to Wikipedia editing. Now, you are not allowed to edit a Wikipedia page that is directly connected to you. So if it's a page about you, you can't edit it. If it's a page about your company, you cannot edit it. But you can hire this guy. And what he will do is when something terrible happens, he will go in and he'll find the paragraph about that terrible thing. And he will pick it apart <laughs> word by word. This doesn't sound like neutral language. Mm -hmm. And he will do page upon page upon page of argument. And he will submit those over and over and over. And it's effective. Until Wikipedia just gives up and the editors <laughs> are like, fine, we'll take out that sentence. They had some examples in there. It was yeah. amazing. And it was all, uh, I can't remember what they were, but it was all really terrible things that these companies did. <laughs> or the individuals had done. There's a couple yeah. of individuals in there as well. Yeah. Uh, I bet Nestle Water hires people like this. Uh, one of the people that hit, because there's a history. Oh, Trump like, interview. Yeah. He said something about immigration. And this guy called it sensationalistic language and a dispassionate voice. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> well, no, no. Wikipedia is supposed to have a dispassionate voice. Yeah. But oh, right. Yeah. Sensationalistic. So we got some of that stuff taken down. Uh, had the awards and honors page put up for NBC. And you really should read this article because it gives examples of this guy. And he's not lying. It's never a lie about these companies. But it's 
as good a light as you can shine. This is like professional Hollywood lighting <laughs> on a Wikipedia. The soft the, pink glow. The pink gels, yeah. yeah. yeah so. Wow, I can't believe they made Samuel L. Jackson look that young. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's the deep fake level <laughs> Wikipedia editing. That we, we are continually amazed how good pink looks when you put it on the lights. Yeah, there's a reason that's a, a meme. The pinky gels. <laughs> so be careful of Wikipedia because this guy, and who knows how many other versions of this guy there are out there. A lot. And because no one else discloses that that's what they are. We talked a little bit about the New Zealand thing last week, and boy, did some people have some opinions about that. And it seems like the more that comes out about the New Zealand massacre, people will do almost anything to distance themselves from it. And this week is no exception. Founder of 8chan has expressed regret in the wake of the New Zealand massacre. Now, he already left the site in December, but because the video was available there and people were discussing it, he's like, mm, that crosses the line. I think they arrested another guy for yeah. talking about it in New Zealand. Seems crazy. Mm. Some people agreed with it, which is maybe Scary. a little terrifying. How about... Video game cloud services. Speaking, Speaking of, of things terrifying. that are terrifying, yeah. And this seems to be the big new thing. Everybody wants to be a part of it. And I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking, oh, yeah, I've heard of Stadia. Wrong. <laughs> Walmart is reportedly looking into launching its own cloud gaming service. Walmart. This is what I've been waiting for my entire life. Wally World. First gaming laptops, next a cloud gaming service. I can imagine laptops being sold at Walmart, low-cost Chromebooks. Yeah. They already sell Chromebooks at Walmart. And then maybe at this cloud gaming service where you could, you know, your Chromebook is just right there. And then you can you could play Overwatch on your Chromebook. Yeah. And <laughs> think about, you know, grandma is listening to the little kids run around and they're like, oh, I want to play Apex Legends. And she's like, Apex Legends? And then she goes to Walmart and there's a $300 laptop and it says... <laughs> Apex Legends included. And she's going to be like, oh, okay. Okay, I and see. A lot of kids are going to get these for gifts, I think. Yeah. A whole new world of gamers. Could work. That are going to be in the cloud. Can't wait to report them all. Where's our Stadia story? It comes I next. Accidentally. Oh, look what you've done. Incorrectly oh. ordered them. Stadia. So, yeah. Stadia is the big news. Stevia. Yeah. Google Stevia. <laughs> very sweet google stadia is the new streaming gaming platform from google it's the announcement was super weird the, like, yeah the videos up there at the top it's like this robotic going... female voice all the way at the top there's a video no there's no, a no, controller I'm, too i'm not i wanted a picture of the controller oh, okay yeah. so that essentially is stadia well the cloud gaming thing too well you can't show a picture of the cloud but this is your Maybe thin you client that's going to yeah, it's directly connected to Wi-Fi. Broadcast all of your games from wherever to whatever monitor you're looking at. That seems crazy. The video, uh, talking about the video, Krista sent me the video. Yeah, the video. Uh, there was no yeah. idea of like what it actually was about. And I watched it, and I had to read the article after I watched it to figure out what the hell Stadia was. Even like during the announcement, they didn't really announce. They announced that they were going to use AMD GPU hardware. But they didn't say what they were using for the CPU hardware, and it was really super weird because they like, used they used a lot of Intel terminology, but they didn't say it was Intel, and so it's not clear why Intel wants to distance themselves from this unless it's like mm, cloud gaming. I don't know if I want to be a part of this. I don't, have they talked about battery life? Well, I mean, it's just streaming, so the battery life would be insane. It's like hardware X two six forty code. It's got to run the modem, and it's got to do some local button stuff it'd probably be nuts the battery life's probably insane here's where i think uh, now we talked about last week the data caps <laughs> this now they did address that and they said that the estimations about 4k 60 fps would be much lower and i don't know how they explain that but low bit rate if you watch this video there's eight people in a room all with their little stadia controller and that's not going to be okay. Your local internet service is not going to support that. I don't know if it was representative of the actual performance, but the little demo video of the guy moving the controller, if you look at it, the latency is insane. But maybe that was just because the, the well, Wi-Fi. That's, that's because he wasn't actually playing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, the other thing is, how, with multiplayer games, with everybody sitting in the same room, are you going to be running one client? Probably not. The real question we need to know is how well will this work with Appalachian Wireless? 
not very well. But they did say that on uh, 4G, they believed 1080 60 was totally possible. No. Well, listen. So, I don't know. That's we'll what see, Google but... said. You're disputing the words of the great Google. Maybe H.265. I think that maybe if like they've got a gaming system in the base of the tower that's giving you that that 4G, maybe. But if it's got to go halfway across the country, no. You got to sit inside the tumor zone <laughs> to get <laughs> zone. hot gaming power. Well, we, the big meme, maybe not of 2019, but certainly the end of 2018, was RTX on. You ray tracing hardware, wow. but. What if you don't need RTX at all? The TechSpot has this amazing article. So much for RTX. Crytek reveals real-time ray tracing demo for AMD and NVIDIA hardware. 10 series graphics cards. So they built a little engine that does real-time ray tracing, and they've got a demo. And the only the only thing that I could see that was a little sketchy was, like, there was fog. There was, like, neon light that was lit. Uh, there was lighting, like, fog. And the texture looked a little weird in the demo. But other than that, it was super impressive. So you're saying that vape simulators would be all wrong. <laughs> I think they've got some work to do, but it looked really good. Like, well, if you can't very vape impressive. in a video game, what's the point? <laughs> they did admit that it's not pure ray tracing. They use some other stuff to fill in some gaps yeah. in order to make up for the performance hit. But it does look really good. You can kind of see that in the fog, but hey, I mean, that's fine. Sounds good to me. It's also not ready. Yeah. You're not going to get it, but it is going to be in the Crytek engine which uh, new developers can use without a lot of investment. And so the plebs will have ray tracing in their own games soon. Woo! Exciting times. Storage, data storage right now, pretty cheap. We're in kind of a golden age of storage, you know, price per gigabyte. It's feeling good. But even solid state drives, you gotta think to yourself, What's the next revolution of density? We need it. And the answer probably isn't this. <laughs> Microsoft just booted up the first DNA drive for storing data. They couldn't even fit Hello World. They only got Hello. And that Yikes. took <laughs> 23 hours to sequence into the DNA and read back. But it is pure DNA, chemical created stores that's that's incredible this is not the first time that this has been done but this is the first time that this has been done in a completely automated way how cool would it be if you could get all of your important documents and just encode it into a pet <laughs> get a little puppy and that's all of your important stuff but then it dies but it's you can still get the dna if it's dead God, what an amazing way to store your offline wallet yeah <laughs> So come here, Rover. I need a drop of your blood in order to... You lose your dog and you have to try and find it, or otherwise you, know, you lose all that stuff. <laughs> dog slash cold wallet lost. <laughs> Reward. We just recently played with VR we here did. in the uh, Level 1 Studios. Thanks, Ava Direct. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a surprising... I think we were all surprised how much fun it was. It yeah. was a lot of fun. But it was a it. little pain in the ass to set up. We actually had some bad hardware that we had to RMA and get a new one. And that could have been avoided if we had this product. Oculus has unveiled the Rift S, a higher resolution VR headset with built-in tracking. And apparently it's just going to sit on your head and it, you don't need the lighthouses. You don't need anything. It does its own tracking actually from the goggles. The lighthouses were what we had issues with. Like they just didn't always work. One, and... one of them actually went bad. Yeah. The other thing about our headset, and I especially felt bad for Krista when it came to this, is that it got really sweaty and nasty. It does get sweaty. Well, yeah, certain games, you know, you start kind of... Yeah, all, pretty much all the games. Yeah. And this one, uh, if you look at the, the design here, this little, like, top halo part, apparently keeps it off of your face. You can adjust this back and forth, but it doesn't have the full face foam contact. Yeah. <laughs> the face hugger mode. Yeah, we, we were disinfecting between each of us but like it still got pretty like moist yeah it might have been <laughs> yeah all those germs might have been dead but the moisture was still there yeah oh yeah <laughs> so it was a good time though i'm looking forward to maybe doing that again yeah and they also have uh the other one so they're selling two versions of this one that has the computation on board you don't need a computer it'll be weaker and it'll be for more normies he i think he used the word casual 
<laughs> casuals. <laughs> and it casuals. sounds perfect for that cloud gaming thing. Yeah, and then, oh, that's true. Uh, Stadia plus VR? You think they're in uh, partnership? Or is Google going to do their own thing? Google's going to do their own thing. You know it. HoloLens 3.0? No, that's not HoloLens. It's uh, Google Glass 3.0. And then there's the Rift S, which does require a computer, but the two are compatible. So if you start out a normie and you get the cheaper one and you're like, no, I'm ready for full VR, you call up Ava Direct and get that VR ready system, <laughs> then you can just merge on over. It's all good. <laughs> we should have put this one in the AI section and I screwed it up, but we can talk about it in the hardware section. Why not? NVIDIA's $99 Jetson Nano is an AI computer for DIY enthusiasts. Five watts, and it's a half a teraflop. Five watts and a half a teraflop. Somebody owns Jetsons, right? How do you think they Hanna Barbera, right? Oh, yeah. That's Hanna Barbera. I think so. Maybe it doesn't. It's, well, if it's a trademark, then the Jetsons in an AI space would not apply in a cartoon space. Mm, it's pretty close, though. It's futuristic. Mm, I guess so. There's a lawyer right so, after that right now. The Nano, they're offering the other one too. What was the other one called? The Nano is the cheaper one. Yeah. 129 for higher end Jetson model. Oh, they're all called Jetsons. But if you just want to, if you're super cheap or you're broke and you're a college student, and you just want to get started, this thing for $99 and five watts, which is pretty good, you can get into AI. And you know what? If they apply their. 200 multiplier technology to it eventually firmware it, upgrade or something it'll be insanely fast yeah you might actually get a lot done with this it's a, it's doing a lot in silicon but for things like object and image recognition and following and stuff like that you can do a lot with this we have l1 trivia the cart that we keep all of our stuff on is called rosie like the <laughs> like the robot assistant from the jetsons no that's just a name we made up that has nothing to do with the Jets and Santa Barbara. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely nothing. <laughs> just we just like, like that name. Just like NVIDIA. We just came up with that. Oh, Lord, she's coming. Here's a, a bit of a, uh, seems like a flashback. What if I told you, now tell me if you think this is crazy. What if I told you you could watch as many movies as you want for nine ninety five a month? Wow, what yeah. a deal. Would you say that that would be something that would just drive a business under and they wouldn't be able to support it financially probably but i would like it hmm TechCrunch has movie pass brings back its unlimited movie plan with a limited time price of 9.95 such a smooth pause you pause there like you couldn't believe it <laughs> what how dare they now that's just an introductory price it's gonna be 19.95 so you've got maximum fomo you need to get in there and uh get that now you do have to buy a year to yeah. get the 995 price. So you're going to buy a year all at once. And it's a limited time offer. I just assumed Movie Pass had already gone under, but they're still, they're, ooh, they're trying. Well, they almost <laughs> is your, did. Is your fear yeah. of missing out at maximum levels? Or are you going to go give them money? But the money? There's all these uh, Marvel movies here's, and stuff coming out. you got to watch them all. Here's the thing to remember. They had the unlimited plan before. Yeah. And they did almost go under. Because people were just living there. So in what, movie theaters. What did they do? They limited it severely <laughs> after the fact and they didn't give you your money back and they didn't give you the opportunity to opt out and they started selling your data and they started selling you advertisement and they started doing everything they could to make money for themselves do you think they'll do that again yeah the article talks a little bit about that and he's like well we're, we, we think we're okay now so the caveats Until they aren't. right off the bat 2d movies only you can only buy tickets Three hours before a movie. You have to pick it up 30 minutes ahead of time. If it's full, you're out. If it's half sold, I think, you're out. Uh, if you're late, you're out. So a lot of caveats and more to come, possibly. Probably. I'm sure that's written into the fine print. Most the terms of service. terrible, I guess, but... Mm. You're not going to see a midnight showing of a Marvel movie, ever. Oh, yeah, no. If you're on fixed income like disability, this is no substitute for friends. But that is probably one of the show. best demographics to get it because you got nothing to do all day. Yeah. And we'll just go watch the matinees. Well, I think that will piss them off, though, because it's like, oh, my gosh, this guy watched four movies every day last week. What's going oh, on? They also talk about uh, if you're abusive to it, there's some wording in there where they can just throttle you down. Yeah. So really, probably you're going to get realistically, I'd say you could probably get away with five a month. Don't you think? At most. For like yeah. a film student, though, that might be worth it. Maybe. Remember Bitcoin? 
Remember when we used to talk about Bitcoin oh. every single and episode? And we checked the price before every news. And it was oh. all that excitement, and it went to $18,000. And Well, it's since fallen. and <laughs> Dramatically. It doesn't seem like a lot of people are using Bitcoin. But even the amount of people that we think are using Bitcoin, probably inflated. Most Bitcoin trading has, uh, you know, it's been faked by unregulated exchanges, a study finds. Bitwise's research casts new doubts about the uh, fraud in this new market. I'm not going to try to pronounce nascent. I think nascent is correct. Oh, nascent. I read it as nascent, but that might be the Midwest in me. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's supposed to be nascent, but everybody around here says nascent, so who knows? <laughs> Engagement challenge. <laughs> so correct us. they looked at... Room two, God damn it. They looked at uh, Coinbase and the other regulated markets, and they saw what you expect in a market. During the day, a lot of volume. Overnight, not a lot of volume. During holidays and stuff like that, volume changes and things. You go through these natural cycles. Uh, on these other exchanges, 24 hours a day, there was just maximum trend, you know, like constant volume. And they believe it's to try and manipulate themselves higher because there are places that will rank the Bitcoin exchanges by volume mm. and you want to be at the top. Seems like a waste of good Bitcoin unless you're the one that's confirming the transaction. No, no, no. Yeah, you're trading with yourself. Mm. So We still get the transaction fees unless you confirm it yourself too. No, that's true. They're probably doing that. Probably have a farm in the back. <laughs> yeah. No. They're going to make the algorithm smarter, and it's like, oh, it's going to follow circadian rhythms now. It'll be fine. <laughs> but which time zone? <laughs> I guess Eastern's that, best. That, that becomes a difficult problem if you really think about it. Yeah. We have talked about Kickstarter a lot and other crowdfunding, and it's bad things happen. You really, you're likely to lose your money when you use Kickstarter, and you never know about what these people are going to do. But this story is not about that. This story is about the employees of Kickstarter. Kickstarter staff is unionizing. Wait, what now? Yeah, Kickstarter. Their staff is going to be a union. It's going to be one of the what? first unions ever in this space. How many employees do you think they've got? I would not think it would be that many, but apparently it's enough so to either. unionize. I mean, you need some customer service. You need some HR. Te does technical it. support. You got to have, yeah, you got to have the hardware staff. And you got to have the web team. That's, that can't be that many. Anyway, they've joined the Office and Professional Employees International Union. So, congratulations. I guess. Do they get Kings Island tickets once a year, though? No. I don't know where they're physically located. That could be a terrible gift if they're in the, the Silicon Valley. <laughs> last year, the big success. It's a long, of, long drive. Last year, the big success of the union was getting a uh, Keurig added to the common area. Here? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, are you? Know. We do have the Keurig, though, right? <laughs> we yeah. do. It's not really been having much use during the construction. There's a lot of construction happening. If, if people here try to unionize, <laughs> don't you worry, sir. I will go in and destroy it from the inside. Mm, this this mint, this this mint coffee, and that that's hints of drywall dust. Oh. Yes, mm. Mm. gives it a nice bouquet. Oh, and, and cigarette smoke. <laughs> yeah, and cigarette smoke. The, the contractors like to smoke. Oh. This they is like a, their cigarettes. This is a 2016 plaster. <laughs> Delicate. Hints of leather. <laughs> Lithuania. We don't talk about Lithuania very often, we do not do And when we do, it's bad. <laughs> this Lithuanian has pled guilty to stealing $100 million from Facebook and Google. But don't worry, he gave back $49 million and something at the bottom. <laughs> Google uh, said they got their $30 million back is. previously. So that's, <laughs> that's still like $30 million that's unaccounted for. He looks... Uh, you he know, looks like a toddler who's dejected because he got caught with his hand in the he cookie He looks jar. like he feels bad about what he did. Probably feels bad because he's going to do some time. He's probably just texting. Now, going into this article, <laughs> I thought this was going to be like click fraud or something like that. No, this is just straight up this guy saying, hey, I'm a contractor. You owe me money. And they were like, okay, here you go. He said he was, was it <laughs> no Quanta? No one in billing checked that. They're just like, all right. Quanta Computing, which is a real company, he impersonated them and just came up with uh, purchase orders and stuff. And was really good at it. I guess he was a hell of a social engineer. And they paid it. And he kept hitting the different companies. It was like Facebook for $100 million and Google for 30 something like that? Or it 70, was total, 70 and 30 Total 100 yeah. Yeah. And so uh, he finally got caught. Didn't launder his money very well. That'll get you. Criminal tip. Gotta learn how to do that. 
Also, I think he probably should have stopped. I mean, after the first twenty million. Yeah. How do you think twenty million U.S. is worth in Lithuania? Yeah, just disappear. Yeah, just get as much, turn it as much of it into cash as you can, and <laughs> go off into the woods. David Nunes or Nunez? Devin. Oh. It's uh, I believe it's Nunez. Nunez. I actually, I don't know. I think it's Nunez, right? Nunez. Oh, yeah. I, don't, yeah, I don't actually know. I've never heard it spoken. I've only mm-hmm. read it. Anyway, he's angry, and who is he angry with? Twitter. The world via Twitter. <laughs> He uh, faces an uphill battle, though, in his lawsuit against Twitter. He's uh, got a defamation and negligence case pending against Twitter. But Twitter, in the U.S., we have something called the Communications Decency Act, which means that Twitter is not liable for the actions of its users. But he's saying that Twitter's not doing enough to police the harassment from users. So this is really scary because he's like a powerful politician and he doesn't understand this. So one would presume that being a politician, he would have better knowledge of what u.s laws are or his staff would tell him or and then it's really scary because it's like maybe this is what they envision for america and it's like ooh, it's getting a little close to russia or china for my taste well didn't uh, didn't trump do that too he was upset because people like twitter wasn't doing certain things like you're a public figure like yeah yeah well he wanted to be able to block people yeah and they said that not because you're a public figure because you're the fucking president. <laughs> you should know you when people, people are upset. you got to have to deal with people's complaints. <laughs> and this is no different. You know, This guy is for sure a public figure. There's no arguing against that. And as a public figure, you have to deal with people not liking you on Twitter. They can say what they want to you. Turns out. I, can't, I mean, the conservatives are supposed to be the free speech party. I, mean, I realize that they're not really. But you at least have to pretend, right? <laughs> No, and this guy. You have to sue Twitter. That's what guy, you have to do. <laughs> he's not doing it. Uh, remember Cambridge Analytica? Remember that scandal? <laughs> that was and like I'm, half the news episodes for weeks. If you're Mark Zuckerberg, you have to be so happy that that's over, and there's nothing that's going to be coming up to bite you in the ass about Cambridge Analytica. You can deal with all this new stuff, all like you know the the mass shooting video being on your service and eating the still living goat and all these news scandals, but you do not have to worry about camera journalism. All this fake news. Oh, wait. Bloomberg has this article. Facebook is accused of knowing that Cambridge mined its user data. So all of this, this is happening. There's, there's an inquiry now in Washington, D.C., but all of this comes about as a result of answers to questions from a European inquiry. Apparently, the Europeans ask better questions. I think we... Famously, that's racist. What? Hmm? <laughs> Saying that the Europeans ask better questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, like when we covered it, like Congress was asking stuff, and they were like reading from paper, and yeah. that we were like they were barely literate. But remember like, that it was also reported uh, what fifty percent of those people asking questions were getting money from Facebook. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean that. It's just see the EU gets their money through fines. <laughs> they don't have to worry about that. <laughs> So really, it's in their best interest to continue. It's a better, it's a better system in some ways. <laughs> you got to admit, right? But uh, so in the European questioning, it came out that Facebook had already investigated Cambridge Analytica months before, and so now they're clarifying and saying, "Oh no, that was this different incident with Cambridge Analytica." <laughs> <laughs> that probably means several people lied under oath. Yeah. But it was a different incident. We didn't know you meant that incident with Cambridge Analytica. Which you would think would lead you to look into Cambridge Analytica with, you know, a bit of a magnifying glass. Eh, Everybody gets a pass. It was their first time. But do we get two passes? Who who could have known? (laughs) Well, it's three strikes you're out. Let's play this by baseball rules. That's true. You know, the week that they were going to follow up, it was on that guy's to-do list to go back and check. Like, literally, the guy that handled the first thing around had on his calendar, like, follow up on Cambridge Analytica. And that was, like, a Friday, and the news story broke on a Tuesday. You know, Krista, that makes a ton of sense, because we go by the baseball rules, and they don't really like that in Europe. Yeah, it's They're more true. of a soccer country. <laughs> Are they getting a red? Is it red card when you get thrown out in <laughs> soccer? I don't know. Someone tell me because I don't know. Ooh, more, we're trying. Those of you who hate constant Facebook news, you know, you've made yourselves. We hear it. And in response to that, I want to say, here's another Facebook story. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook to overhaul ad targeting to prevent discrimination. This story seems awfully familiar, and yet it's dated March 19th, 2019. <laughs> it turns out this already came up, and they already said, you know what? We're going to fix that. This came up when a lot of housing people were saying, <laughs> hey, Facebook, um, 
I've got this house or this apartment building. I really don't want Hispanics here. Yikes. And the advertising engine was like, can do. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of went on even after they got rid of it. And so it's come up again. Yeah. And not only that, but they are, they got hit on a lot more. Like even soccer mom, even being able to say, I don't want soccer moms to see my ad. People are not happy about that. People don't want to be put into little containers and brushed to the side. So Facebook claims they are overhauling everything. Uh, gender, race, sexuality, religion, all of that has to be cut out of the ad targeting system. Is that just going to totally destroy them? Because how it's, else are you going to target your target audience? It's got to hurt the bottom line. Yeah. That is going to destroy my friend's communion wafer company because he, he depends on being able to target Catholic people on Facebook in order to sell his communion wafers. Wouldn't you target the church in particular? Because they're the ones who are going to buy it, not like just a random no, practitioner. No, that's not how that works. I don't, how often? I'm not Catholic, but I, don't know. but I think that's how that works. Are you th Imagine a world where, you know, to some priest is just trolling around on Facebook and he's like, oh my God, we can save so much money on wafers. <laughs> the way Wendell's describing it, it's just like some random Catholic person who's yeah. not even a preacher. He's like, you know what? I could he, use some communion wafers. He calls up the Cardinal. He's like, the body of Christ is on sale. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> now you hate Facebook stories, right? You're tired of them. Well, how about this is going to blow your Throw mind? Throwback Thursday. How about a MySpace story? <laughs> MySpace has reportedly lost 50 million songs uploaded over 12 years. Press F to pay respects because that's how I got all my music when Press I was in school. Press F 50 million times. Yeah. They were doing a server migration and the data from 2003 to 2015 was lost. Or maybe MySpace just doesn't matter anymore and well, they deleted it. Well, that's 50 million MP3s. That's quite a lot of storage. And you're probably not getting a lot of clicks on those. So those MP3s are sketchy as hell. Yeah, so sure would be a shame if we didn't have to host all this and deal with it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, it's gone. That's so gone sad. Forever. Who knows? MySpace did, although, try to reinvent itself as a music platform. It did, yeah. 2013. So losing music on a music platform? Yeah, it's kind of bad, yeah. Kind of bad. So maybe it was an accident. But either way, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to get it back. Which, a company, I don't think they were that huge, but they've been around long enough. Seems like they have a backup, don't you think? No, they cost too much money. Uh, Raise or thin margins. You think Tom's just buying more markers for that whiteboard? I don't think he's worried about that. I don't think Tom is involved at this stage. I, I think he became a photographer and just doesn't care anymore. A photographer really? who happens to have hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank. <laughs> yeah. 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 So he got out when it was smart. He's looking at those stories about Zuckerberg and he's like, that could have been me. I made it out. Except he's human. That's true. Well, we don't know he, that. He does seem a lot more human. Well, yeah, it's just him with the whiteboard and smiling at the camera. That's Everyone knows Tom. I feel bad, bad for actual human beings that have trouble expressing their emotions. Mark Zuckerberg is something else. Hey. We should cut him open and find out why. <laughs> that scene cut him open. It's all just... Spoiler. It's all just wires and gears and undigested goat. <laughs> it's like, he gives off like a sort of strange smell. And it's the undigested goat that's yeah, just in leaking his... out from seams. Yeah. Stuck in between cogs. <laughs> Instagram. That's another company that Mark Zuckerberg owns and that's ruthlessly true. deploys. And Instagram is a little late to the party, but they have gotten on the uh Provax bandwagon, I guess. Instagram is going to block anti-vaccine hashtags amid misinformation crackdown. You should read some of these because one of them we we actually had to Google because we and that ruined our search recommendations. I'm sure. Vaccines cause autism. That yeah. one's obvious. Yeah. Vaccines are poison. Obvious. <laughs> this is the one that, uh, that messed us up. A that little I didn't bit. know. Yeah. Vaccine. I thought it was vaccines cause. Oh wait, no, there's no S. Yeah, it's it's like typoed. Your theory? Oh, you think that's a typo? Yeah, right. I think that's the probably hill. a typo. So it's supposed to be SID, sudden infant death syndrome. Well, or, they got a typo. or IDS is something that we don't, we couldn't. Well, I couldn't find it. Yeah, I tried putting in that exact hashtag and couldn't find it, and it corrected the SIDS. These hashtags are blocked because, as you know, you need to be vaccinated. Please tell me you know that. I actually <laughs> ran into an anti-vaxer in the wild. Wow. Well, yeah, you say in the wild, but it was on Facebook. It was on Facebook. It was a. A friend of a friend, sister. 
So it's several degrees separated, but I would be, I, I don't interface with anti-vaxxers. <laughs> Wendell. <laughs> but uh, you got to get a, a little hand exerciser. I got those from my office. Go. Won't make noise. Yeah, you can smush on that thing. Uh, I would be so tempted to troll the anti-vaxxers yeah. and just convince them that they have to. It's like, listen, people are going to try to change your mind. You have to stick to this. Well, she doesn't have a, she doesn't have any children. She's pregnant. And she's like, I don't even know why you have to get measles vaccines. Like, kids just need to toughen up. And I'm like, you realize if your kid gets measles, they're immunocompromised for years after. Like, your kid won't just get to play in the dirt because they're immunocompromised. I would, uh, but I, I didn't respond. I just blocked, and I was like, I, I can't see that. I'd be in there like, listen, don't let them give you an epidural. <laughs> it's poison. <laughs> that will cause your child to be retarded. It's a hundred percent. You're gonna be a pot person. You gotta just just power <laughs> through it. Person. Just get a leather strap, bite down on it. Your child will thank you later. My mom didn't have an epidural because she got to the hospital too late. She had me completely natural. <laughs> And of course, she's like, oh, it wasn't that bad. I'm just so happy I had it. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> no, and while we're at it, baby bottles, those cause cancer. <laughs> the little plastic, the little plastic. Uh, Everything about them. BPA. Oh, our people, people will argue a lot about breast is best. So. It, it's literally made, made from mercury. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway. that's all we got for that one. Now, Friday will be security. Krista's favorite. No, oh, my and favorite category. Nonsense. A lot of nonsense. nonsense. Everybody's favorite. What was, it, what was their runtime? Friday might be a little oh, short. I bet this one was long. This one probably was long. Oh, yeah. 51. Ooh. Well, you should join Patreon and thanks. And I'm working on the podcast thing. It's it's mostly working again, sort of, kind of. In the meantime, we've had our intern going through and manually She's adding Just manually it adding it to Patreon. Or, and the Kofi thing, we're working on that, too. So you should have it there as well. But Oh, we're getting our crap together. Oh, 52 minutes. Bye. See ya. Thank you.